What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're looking at some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. A huge thank you to each and every one of you for turning up today. Taking the time out of your day to support this channel is absolutely amazing. And with that being said, let's just jump straight in to today's story, shall we? Much love, guys. Our first story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for taking away my sibling free food privileges from the restaurants I own because they kept telling me I deserved not to get any money from my father in his will? So my father died a few weeks back. It wasn't a shock, he had cancer and already lived past the time he was given. But before his death, my father told me that he was taking me out of his will because I was already so successful in life. I'm 32 and own three restaurants that are still doing good despite current events. Though he did give me my great grandfather's World War II M1911, which I was very happy to get. Now, I was upset about being taken out of the will. I mean, I didn't feel like doing things right and being successful was a good reason to be kicked out, but I didn't argue it or even really bring it up while my father was living. Arguing about money would have just been a way to waste time in my father's final days. Anyway, fast forward, my father passed and my brother and sister, let's call them James and Holly, they received 750k from my father in his will. Now they aren't poor, but it's a big jump between what they make and what I make. I brought up what my father said and told him I was angry and upset with his reasoning. I felt I was being punished for doing right, but James told me, dad was right to cut you out. You make so much, you didn't need any more. We do. And Holly followed it up by, why are you complaining? You're already well off. This would have just been the icing on the cake. Then I was just trying to think of something to say that was calm. James asked, you aren't gonna try and contest this, right? I just waved them off. I didn't wanna talk with them, but they kept on telling me that I didn't need it and I'd better not contest. I told them to stop bringing it up and let me be upset for a little while, then I will get over it. But they didn't. They had in their minds I was gonna contest and try and get 250K from each of them. I had no plans to contest if it was my father's wish not to give me money. And despite my objection to his reasoning, I will respect that. But after another confrontation about how I didn't need it and deserve any money, I told James and Holly that my restaurants that they frequent and enjoy will no longer be free to eat anymore as I was tired of them confronting me. Now James and Holly are mad at me saying I'm doing this because I am mad about them getting an inheritance, which is in part true. I am upset by that, but had they just let me be mad, I would have gotten over it. But am I the asshole for taking away their free family discount at my restaurants? Now putting myself in OP's shoes, I think I might have been a bit upset as well just for being taken out of the will, you know. Because I think it's just more of the sentiment of it of being removed from the will rather than not not sort of about the money, but just the, the, the sort of sentiment of it all. And he's he's right. I mean he's done he's done well in life. Why should he be punished for that, you know? Just because the other two haven't done so well that they somehow deserve all the money because of it. It just doesn't make sense. But down to the actual title of their story, no, they can afford to pay now. They shouldn't be getting free food at your restaurants. The entitlement is just all over the place in this. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So yeah, that's my, <laughs> my opinion on this one. But let's go to the comments below to see what they say. River Redhead says, not the arsehole. James and Holly sound like toxic freeloaders who don't know how to quit when they're ahead. The punchline is funny says, not the arsehole. If you've accepted that you aren't contesting that will, then don't. But you are at the very least are entitled to make them pay for their meals from now on. If they can't be bothered to take a hint. Not like they can't afford it anymore. Psycho Crafter says, it's a difficult situation, but they can't have their cake and eat it. If you'll forgive the phrasing. They were both given substantially more money in the will than if you had been left in supposedly because it would have them become more financially equal with you. In that case, why should they be given more privileges at your expense? Not the arsehole. And Miranda666 says, not the arsehole. They can now officially afford to eat at your restaurants and their constant comments about how you have no right to be upset are really upsetting. Letting family eat for free is just a nice gesture, but unnecessary now you know they can easily afford it. Now, what do you guys think of this difficult situation? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. Now our next story is from No Wahala Biko. Am I the arsehole for trapping a stranger in my parking stop as my daughter needed to pee? This happened earlier today and I'm worried I've turned into an inconsiderate arsehole. I live behind a popular station and cars normally park on my road to commute to work or to pick up people from the station. Because of this, parking is limited, causing some people to illegally park across driveways or on double yellow lines. 
Before the lockdown, this one woman took to parking on our private driveway while she waited for her friend. The driveway is obviously part of my garden, but directly behind the station. Each time she did it, I asked her not to because we needed our parking space and it's our private property. She would tell me she wouldn't be long and would normally be gone after 10 minutes. I've caught her doing this three times and I've seen her on our security system 11 times. Today, I left in the car to pick up my daughter from nursery. When I returned, she was waiting for her friend in my driveway. I flashed my headlights, but she indicated that she'd be a few minutes. This is where I think I messed up. My three years was in the car and needed to pee badly. My seven months was crying and they wanted to be held. I pulled up across the front of my driveway and got the kids out of the car and went into the house. As the lady realized what I was doing, she opened her car door and asked me to move my car. I ignored her and went into the house. My three-year-old made it to the toilet just in time and the baby calmed down after a cuddle. By now, I could see the lady's friend had arrived and she honked her horn so I'd move my car. I ignored her, called my husband and told him what happened. He said he was 15 minutes away and he'd move the car when he got back. She came to the door knocking loudly and asked me to move my car. I told her via the kitchen window that she would need to wait for 15 minutes as I wasn't putting the kids back in the car to move it and she shouldn't have parked on my driveway. I was a bit of a condescending twat in the way I spoke to her, but I didn't swear and wasn't blatantly rude, but I was a dick. She lost her mind and swore and hit the door. It was locked and she couldn't get in. I told her to calm the fuck down and she was upset at my kids. She said she was calling the police and I said go ahead, with all that's going on it's a waste of their time. Plus I had a security camera that would show I asked her to move, plus the other time she parked there. My husband arrived 20 minutes later and moved the car so she could leave. Am I the arsehole for not moving the car as soon as her friend arrived? Hell no, if someone parks on my drive they get exactly the same treatment. The cheek of her to sit there and say I'm only going to be a few minutes on your private drive, is she kidding? Put a bollard at the end of your drive and as soon as she does it again, put that mother up. Don't let her go. <laughs> Unbelievable how, how some people can act this way. <laughs> it just still shocks me. Entitlement. Not the asshole in any way, shape or form in my opinion, but let's have a look at the comments below to see what they said. Just Win says, not the arsehole, you're a legend, good for you. That a teacher, selfish woman. You don't park on people's driveways without their permission. Insta Sadie says, not the asshole. you asked her multiple times not to and she continued to act like she was entitled to use your space. The part where you were driving home and she said she needed a few more minutes made me mad. It's your house and your driveway, like what the fuck? I think you handled this perfectly to be honest. Also, if she does come back to harass you again, definitely call the cops. Bullseye1983 says, not the arsehole and block her every time. She knows it's private property, she has been warned, she now has to deal with the consequences if she continues. Let her call the police so they can tell her she is wrong. God, it sounds like my road actually. I live like literally two minutes from the train station and we got the road where people just park down like willy nilly all the time just so they can go, go to London because we're quite close to London. So, And it's one of the main train routes to London that they go to. So they all park down our road and some park in front of drives and stuff. So I can, I can actually picture it down that road somewhere. Wow. Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description. For story two. And our next story is from Littlebrush4871. Am I the arsehole for planning a solo vacation and expecting my family to survive on their own? Obvious throwaway. I'm a 34 year old stay at home mum. I gave up a career as a nurse to support our family on the home front while my husband is a doctor. I can't say I like it but I'm able to help my kids with distance learning and I'm fully in charge of our home. I have four kids, 11 year old son, a 10 year old son and two six year old sons. Everyone in our family has responsibilities at home. It's nothing extreme, but I expect everyone to chip in as I'm not the only one living in the house. I take on probably about 80% of the work, including all the deep cleaning, cooking, meal planning, errands, and financial planning. Well, getting everyone to actually do anything is a completely different story, so I usually end up having to do everyone else's chores too. A few weeks ago, I finally broke. No one helps, no one gives me a break. I haven't had a day off since the twins were born. I told my family I was done after begging for help for over a year. But I'm a mum, I should be able to do it all. Here's where I might be the arsehole. I booked myself a week long vacation to a secluded cabin and an hour away and informed my family that I will be going alone and would only be reachable in an emergency. I told them I expect my house in close to the same condition. I left it in and they will have to cook and clean for the time I'm gone. I've been getting the silent treatment ever since I told them and my husband is pissed. Am I the arsehole? 
Edit, my husband has taken week long trips away from us with minimal notice. We have discussed the cleaning issue quite a few times and nothing has changed. I have my sister coming to watch the kids while my husband is at work and they have three weeks to prepare. I will be reachable but husband doesn't know the exact location of my cabin but knows the general area. <laughs> wow, she is broke, she's going for it man. <laughs> you know, I think to get to that point in a relationship that you actually break and think, yeah, I'm going on a week long vacation. You know, there must be some extreme shit going on, some extreme disrespect in the household and not helping out, you know. She says she does 80% and she expects people to chip in too because she's not the only one that lives there. And I know we cover this topic so many times on this subreddit and people always disagree saying like, oh no, she should be doing 100% because she's a stay at home mum. And I've got to say every time I disagree, I disagree every single time because that is a full time job they're doing. Um, but yeah, people would disagree with me every time. And let's go straight to the comments because we <laughs> we just go around in circles. Our first comment is from Lightwood Orchestra saying, not the arsehole, enjoy the hell out of that vacation. You obviously earned it. Your husband can deal with things for a single week for fuck's sake. Vast Cartographer says, not the arsehole, but stop doing some things for the kids and get some help around the house. Outsource something for your sanity. Let the kids take on age appropriate things like feeding themselves lunch. Kids won't starve if they have to make their own lunch. Maybe they miss a meal and be fine or figure it out. Maybe they eat Oreos and realize they're hungry at three. The other meals will balance it out. Now is the time to let them figure out how to do some of this for themselves. Otherwise they will expect the same of their partners. And Lily2404 says, edit to not the arsehole. After seeing OP's comments that she fixed the childcare part before booking the holiday and that her husband has taken solo trips to get away from work and family life several times. Now I'm gonna turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of the situation? Have you ever been that close to breaking and thinking, fuck this, I'm going, I'm, I'm booking a holiday just for myself to get away. I think most people have probably thought about it at some point, right? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from Shy Intellect. Am I the arsehole for not paying for my boyfriend's dog surgery after he refused to pay for my college tuition? My boyfriend, 28 male, and I, 25 female, have been together for almost two years now. This January, I had to pay 4,000 Canadian dollars semester fee. I get 180 Canadian dollars every 15 days from the uni as funding. I work part-time, which is enough to cover my rent and bills. My parents are putting my sister through college too, and I manage my own finances so as not to stress them out. So when January came, I had around 3K in my account. I wanted to save 1K for emergency rent and bills. So I was left with 2K but did not want to pay penalty for late fee, so I figured I'd ask my boyfriend for the loan of 2K. I told him that my paycheck was coming on the second week of January, plus the uni will also start paying me my funding, and I will save a few dollars for my part-time job, and pay back the 2K loan to him in exactly four months, with $100 in interest. I know it's not much, but I knew he had idle cash on his account. He said he does not feel comfortable with giving a loan to me, and it never works out for close people when given loans. I laid out the entire plan of paying him back, like when the money was coming and so on. He said he wasn't comfortable. I was kind of mad at him, but did not say anything because up until then, we rarely discussed finances. In April, my grandma sold her beautiful cabin because she is too old to take care of it and no one was visiting the cabin anymore. She gave half the amount she received to me. It is on the higher side of five figures. Early September, my boyfriend's dog, six-year-old Rottweiler, was diagnosed with early stage cancer. It can be treated, will cost 5k, but the quality of life may go down to 60%, doctor's words. Boyfriend was laid off when COVID hit and is living off EI. Last week, boyfriend asked me if I could pay for our dog surgery. I never thought the dog is ours because A, that's the first time he's ever said our dog. B, we don't live together, so I don't see the dog much. And C, never developed a tight bond with the dog because I met her when she was an adult dog. Anyway, I figured he was talking about a loan maybe and I said jokingly how much interest should I charge and he said it would not be a loan and I'd be paying to save our dog. I was already kind of mad when I thought he was asking for a loan after all the tuition fee fiasco but he wants me to pay the money for the whole surgery. I said no, I was not going to spend my money on it. I told him to take a loan either from me or someone else. Better from someone else because taking money from close people doesn't work out. I've been saving my money to pay for my brother's tuition so that he won't have to struggle when, when he comes here. But honestly, I did not even tell my boyfriend that because I was so mad. I feel like an asshole now, but honestly, had he asked for a loan, I would have given the money. But he wants me to fully pay for it because I have the inheritance and he doesn't have a job. Am I the asshole? Now we're going to head straight to the comments with this one with am I the asshole saying, 
Not the arsehole, but why are you still with a dingus that has shown that he won't help you, but will expect you to help him? <laughs> Dingus. <laughs> View from the East says, oh my God, you are so not the asshole here on so many levels. Your boyfriend has the means to help you and refused. And now straight wants you to give him 5K for a dog that's not even yours. Nope, hard pass. And Lily2404 says, not the asshole. And even if the dog is also yours, then you should ask for half the money, not for you to pay the whole amount. Your boyfriend seems quite entitled to your money when he's not that generous with his own. Not that he had any obligation to lend you money anyway. Sounds like a clear double standard to me. I understand it's his dog and of course he is worried about him, but he cannot pawn this on you. He needs to figure out where to get the money from. And Jupiter Warren says, not the arsehole, he has the right to deny you the money if he's uncomfortable, but he also knew it could have cost you more in the long run and possibly set your education back by a lot. He has no right to claim that you're part owner of the dog just because he wants you to foot the bill for the dog's surgery. I feel bad for the pup, but it's not your place to pay for his dog's needs, especially after he wouldn't even help you when you were in need. He made a decision that he felt comfortable with and has no right to expect you to give in when he needs help and you don't feel comfortable giving it. Not the arsehole. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of the story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.